Hello and welcome to this short video during which I shall be describing a condition, late onset retinal degeneration, shortened version Lord, and some of the work and relevance uh, to research that we've been doing uh, here in Edinburgh. What is this condition? Well, it's an inherited blinding disease affecting the vision of both eyes of affected individuals. These individuals carry uh, a mutation in one of the genes which determines their um, future visual fate. And the founder mutation um, has been traced back to southeast Scotland, to Haddington in East Lothian. And the work that we've been doing here in Edinburgh stretches back to the 1980s. Um, the first clinical observations by Joe Duval, who was an ophthalmologist here, who worked together with Bill Lee, um, an ocular pathologist in Glasgow, in defining the typical changes that occur within the eye of uh, individuals with Lord. And um, Alan Wright, who led the research team that first described gene mutation, and Xin Zhu, who worked with Alan, uh, he works now in, in Glasgow, who uncovered some of the basic cell mechanisms whereby this particular mutation causes sight loss. So what's the challenge? Well, the challenge is really to take some of the research that we've been doing here in Edinburgh, and I'll describe a little bit about it in a second, to a, a clinical trial and trying to translate some of that laboratory work into a clinically meaningful uh, research protocol that will offer hope um, to patients. And the point of intervention that we're going to be um, looking at is the uh, current subject of um, some scrutiny and work, but we've uh, formed a collaboration with partners in the United States in order to try and construct this clinical trial. And it takes very close cooperation between both clinical ophthalmologists and laboratory-based scientists in order to do this. Um, the uh, families of individuals who hail from uh, this particular part of Scotland who've moved both to Northern England and parts of uh, the United States are currently being monitored by ophthalmologists. I see patients um, and their families with this condition on a regular basis. At the moment, there is no treatment. Um, there is no hope for uh, restoring vision or re even reducing progression of this particular disease. And so what we're trying to do is offer light at the end of the tunnel. Um, this has been um, a long journey, uh, clearly for the patients and also for researchers. And uh, we're now in a position now where we can start to think about a clinical trial. So what symptoms do um, individuals who uh, have late onset retinal degeneration, what do they experience? Well, a predominant one is uh, that the symptoms occur late on in life, around the fifth decade, and poor vision at night, dim night sight, as shown in this picture here. This is one of the main symptoms that patients will notice um, in uh, their fifth decade. This is a clinical photograph showing some of the changes that might enable um, ophthalmologists to think about the diagnosis. There are large areas here in these photographs of a patient's eyes of the retina which show atrophy or missing tissue. The retinal pigment epithelium, which is the target tissue in this condition, is slowly undergoing progressive atrophy such that the macula, which is shown here in these photographs, loses function and so individuals are unable then to see uh, faces, read, uh, recognize detail in the central part of the vision. But not only that, but also the peripheral vision also progressively constricts. And that's why it leads to such devastating visual consequences. Um, there are other conditions that may also produce poor night vision and also changes at the macula and the retina, and some of them are listed here. Um, I think the important thing is to think about the diagnosis. It does become manifest in uh, middle age with poor night vision, but it does progress and it affects not only the central vision, but the peripheral vision as well. Uh, we described the progression in a, a, a paper that we wrote uh, several years ago, and this panel from that paper shows some of uh, the changes, some not very obvious. This is a colour fund, uh, funders photograph of the macula of a patient who carries a gene mutation, and at this stage, there's not an awful lot of abnormality. There's nice red-pink tissue sitting here. Uh, the retinal pigment epithelium um, is anatomically still present, but the patient has 
progressive night visual problems. And in the, uh, the sixth decade, it becomes evident that there are fine white spots affecting the retina, shown here in this colour photograph. They can often be mistaken as drusen, which is a condition which affects individuals with age-related macular degeneration. But unlike drusen, they get progressively worse relatively rapidly, and they also involve the edge vision, the peripheral retina. And as a patient reaches the seventh and eighth decade, this change becomes very, very obvious and is more advanced than somebody with typical age-related macular degeneration. So it's an important differential diagnosis to consider. Um, in terms of um, di diagnoses, um, and what might be mistaken for late onset retinal degeneration? Well, macular degeneration par excellence is, is the one. Sometimes individuals uh, are thought to have normal tension glaucoma because their visual fields progressively constrict. And it's only when you look at the retina and these uh, fundus uh, retinal photographs of two sisters who we described um, in this paper uh, some years ago, who had, um, th were thought to have age-related macular degeneration and normal tension glaucoma, purely because they had changes in the central vision and their visual field was constricting. So I think getting a diagnosis early on is very helpful. So how do we make a diagnosis early on if the changes in the retina aren't evident until later in life, until the sixth decade, for example? Well, uh, we look very closely for hallmark features, biomarkers almost, of the condition. And if somebody presents to um, an eye hospital, to an ophthalmologist with poor night vision, um, these structures should be looked for. Now, this is a, a very magnified view of uh, a patient's eye who has this particular condition. It looks red um, around the edge, if you just ignore the light flash reflex in the middle. And against the red reflex, we see these very fine striations all around uh, the pupil margin there. And those fine striations um, are actually extended long abnormal zonules. Now zonules uh, are the structures that hold the natural lens in place. Um, and we looked at uh, the electron microscopy appearance of these in a paper that we um, uh, published recently with a group in Newcastle with Andrew Browning. We looked for the very specific um, abnormal mutant protein, which we found in the lens capsule. These patients were all undergoing cataract surgery. Bear in mind that these zonules uh, are often present at a very early age, at a stage when an individual might not even be symptomatic. And if somebody does have poor night vision and has these early signs in their fifth decade, which look like drusen, and they also have these long zonules, then again, late onset retinal degeneration should be suspected, particularly if there's a family history of this condition, because uh, this uh, form of inherited retinal disease um, is passed on in a dominant fashion, um, which means that if you um, carry the dominant gene, you will develop the symptoms inevitably. And the inheritance um, and the gene mutation, as I mentioned, is now better understood uh, than it was. We're still discovering new things about the inheritance and the genetics of this condition. But um, from the clinical perspective, the long zonule, poor night vision, stippled looking retina in a relatively young patient is what should um, really raise the possible diagnosis. So what have we been doing here in Edinburgh? Well, we've been following in the footsteps of two extremely famous scientists, Ian Wilmots, um, who um, has introduced many um, very inventive and uh, very important breakthroughs in uh, cloning science, uh, shown alongside here with Dolly the Sheep, for which he's very famous, and Shinya Yamanaka, who won the Nobel Prize, um, who really laid the foundations for the work that we've been doing, which is to try and derive stem cells from adult cells. So what we've been doing um, in individuals with uh, late onset retinal degeneration and unaffected controls is to take samples um, from uh, either skin biopsy or blood and grow these out in the uh, tissue dish. And using Yamanaka's particular technique, we've been making these cells turn into induced pluripotent stem cells. They carry all the characteristics of stem cells, but they're derived from 
um, a human adult. From there, we can grow in a dish primordial uh, cell um, optic vesicles, and we can also, from there, grow specific tissue structures that we find in the eye. In our particular case, we're looking at the target tissue of late onset retinal degeneration, which is the retinal pigment epithelium, the layer beneath the photoreceptors, uh, upon which the photoreceptors are very dependent, and without which the photoreceptors will degenerate and wither away. From this stem cell population, which we're then driven towards uh, a retinal pigment epithelial um, type, we can then use the cells for lots of different things, potentially for transplant purposes, we can use it for drug discovery in the Petri dish, but we've been using it for tissue modelling, by which I mean we've been growing the retinal pigment epithelial cells that we've derived from the induced pluripotent stem cell population, growing them in a dish, and then examining very closely what happens in um, the cells, both uh, which carry the mutant gene and also the controls. And we've been looking at very specific differences between the two groups. And that's allowed us to form the basis of the next step, which is to try and then change uh, the mutated gene, alter the progression of disease initially in the Petri dish in the laboratory, and the aim ultimately is to try and either reverse or reduce progression by genetic changes to the mutant um, gene within the retinal pigment epithelial cell. And so the treatment trial that we envisage, which we'll be devising um, in the next year or two, will really address the clinical disease based on the science of understanding both a mechanism and how we might ameliorate the disease from progressing, causing progressive visual loss, both centrally and peripherally. And it does offer hope, I think, for the patients affected with this condition, and also for future patients who might carry the mutation, and it offers a pathway along which we might travel in order to discover a new cure for this particular condition. Thank you.